This, everybody, is a Dell Vostro 3590. I bought this second hand for 40 euros. It's described as for parts or repair. And when I queried the seller as to what happened when you try and power it on, he says absolutely nothing. Now, this is an i3, 10th generation, so I can get Windows 11 on it if I can get it working again. So let me just show you what happens when I press the power button. So it looks like the seller was right. Absolutely nothing happens when you press the power button. So let's take it apart and we can see if we can find out what's wrong with it. When I removed the bottom cover from this laptop, I wanted to check on the power button first because it felt quite spongy. And this power button cap is actually broken. Let me show you what it looks like in isolation. The power button on these laptops is, the power button cover looks like this. It's just a piece of plastic. It has two arms that you know hold it in place and this one is broken right here so that's broken to start with but also the little power button board is actually missing and if you look in here you can see that the cable from the power button board to the main motherboard is actually cut now this is not so bad because it may mean that if we can get a power button signal to this motherboard it may switch on but before doing anything else, I need to check that the signals on the power button connector on the motherboard are correct. So if we look here, we can see that there should be a little daughter board here for the power button. There should be a cable running along here and under the fan. And this is where our power button should connect. Now I have a full schematic for this motherboard. So instead of starting our troubleshooting at the power button connector, I thought it might be of more value to go right back to the input section and see if we can get a more comprehensive understanding of how this laptop works. So let's see if we can locate our DC input and start there. I've located our DC in connector right here and there are six pins, one, two, three, four, five and six. If we mark those out on the schematic, it tells me those six pins are for the following. We have two ground pins, one and two. We have a PSID pin on number three. We have pin four, which is not connected, and our DC in comes in on pins five and six. And if we zoom in on pins five and six, we can see that our DC voltage comes onto the board here and then goes through these vias to the other side of the board. So let's follow it across to the other side of the board. Our DC in comes through to the other side of the other motherboard here and I measured at this point and I found that we had 19.95 volts. Through the inductor, PL1, I measured on the other side of this and I also found that we had 19.95 volts and then we just need to follow along the track to see the next part of the circuit. Let's follow it and see where it goes. PQB11 is the first of our two input MOSFETs. It's an EMB04NO3 30 volt N channel MOSFET. As you can see, it has four drain pins on one side, three source pins and a gate. And measuring at our gate pin, I found that we had 24 volts. This switches the MOSFET on and allows our DC in voltage through the MOSFET and on to our second MOSFET. Our second MOSFET is also an EMB04NO3 30 volt N channel MOSFET. At the gate pin of this MOSFET, I also measure 24 volts, 24.5 volts in fact. And this is enough to switch this MOSFET on and permit our 19 volts through as our main power rail. So our input voltage is making it through our two input MOSFETs and through our current sense resistor. So where do we check next? Well next I'm going to find the battery management IC and check if we have voltage there. I've located our battery management IC right here. It's an Intercell 95522H. If we mark in the pinouts on that, you can see what each of these pins is for. Now, a lot of these battery management ICs regulates that input voltage down to a lower voltage, which it then calls VSYS and sends down to the rest of the circuit. However, if I look at the schematic for this, you can see that 
PRB02 is where I'm measuring 19.95 volts. This is not changed in any way by the battery management I see. It's actually sent down to the rest of the circuit as 19.9 volts. So you can see it here. This plus 19 volt VB is sent down to all of the other secondary circuits. If we look further down our schematic, we can see that that plus 19 VB is the input voltage for PU301. And PU301 is the IC that is responsible for producing our 3.3 volts. Now, we have already established that we have 19.95 volts at the current sense resistor, so we know our input voltage is good. We just need to confirm whether we have our 3.3 volts output on PU301. So let's find PU301 and take some measurements. And this is PU301, which came through a little out of focus, but we'll work away with it anyway. These are the pinouts for that IC. So as you can see, we have our input on these four pins right here. We have our high current 3.3 volts on pins 19 and 20, which come onto this inductor PL301 right here. And we have our LDO, our always on 3.3 volts on pin 17, which comes out and onto this capacitor right here. So the measurements I took were as follows. On the input, I found that it measured 19.95 volts right here. So we have the correct input. On our LDO, I measured 3.38 volts. And on our higher current LX, 3.3 volts on pins 19 and 20, I measured 3.4 volts. Having established that our 3.3 volts power rails are online, we can now go to our power button connector JPWR1. That's this connector right here. It has four pins. Let's mark in those four pins. And those four pins are for number one is for ground, number two is for our power switch, number three is for our lid switch, and number four is plus three volts ALW. So when I take a voltage measurement on these pins, I found the following measurements. On pin 1, I measured 0 volts, obviously because it's ground. On pin 2, I measured 2.8 volts for our power switch. On pin 3, I measured 3.1 volts for our lid switch. And on pin 4, I measured 3.3 volts for our plus 3 VALW. So it looks like we have the correct voltages here. But as we established earlier on in the video, we don't have a power button board and we don't have a power button cable because the power button cable is ripped. So how do we simulate the power button being pressed? So to simulate the power button being pressed, we need to momentarily ground pin number two. And to do that, all I do is get my screwdriver and connect pin two to pin one and then release it. That simulates the power button being pressed. So let's try that and see what happens. Okay, so I've put the motherboard back into the laptop chassis and I'm now going to try and power it on with my screwdriver by jumping at the ground. As you can see, the power light has come on. Okay, but it's beeping. And there is nothing on the screen. And it's just shut off again. I've tried powering on the laptop a number of times and on at least three separate occasions I've got this error right here. Two orange, seven white. So it's telling me that there's also a problem with the screen. And on one occasion when I tried to power it on, the backlight did come on for a second and that allowed me to see that the screen is badly damaged. Now because I'm building up quite a collection of broken Dell laptops here, I actually have a spare screen for a Dell Vostro 3590. So what I'm going to try and do is power the laptop on with my good screen and see if we can get this to boot. So this is my spare screen and as you can see I have connected it into the EDP port on this laptop. So let's try powering it on. Okay. So we got the white light again, so this is powered on. Okay, and this time it's powering on. And that concludes my video for this week. That was quite an easy fix this week. Uh, it's a lot easier when you have the full chassis of the laptop and when you have a second laptop for spare parts. I have two of these Dell Vostro 3590s, one that has a bad motherboard and the one this week which has a bad screen and a bad power button. So I'm just going to make one good laptop out of the two.
Please like and subscribe if you like what I do and I'll be back with another video next week.